Hi everyone, welcome back. Well, I, I'm i going to be starting here pretty quick on my, this is a big commission portrait that i got to do here, so I'm going to be starting that this afternoon, but I thought, well, I just gave it a coat of the canvas prep here, and uh, still a little tacky, so I'm going to let that dry. I'll film up another one of the little Christmas series here for you guys, so we can, uh, so I keep going, I keep my brush going, okay? So again, here's the, um, the, uh, uh, 8x10 board and I painted it you know base both sides here with a um, it's an MDF panel and I base both sides here with the uh, the light kind of tan color and uh, my dirty palette from the last one I just did I didn't even decide to clean it off this last time so you know these boards that I, I prep up I do a whole bunch of them at a time you know you can make a nice light tan color out of red yellow a little bit of black and white uh, we have pre-made colors that are the light gray and the medium beige. Like if you get a big container of that, because you can get it really economical, it's the best way to get it. A uh, big container of that. And you could use it. As a matter of fact, I had that around here someplace. Oh, I, I mix it all up together into a large container. You can see it's even not even mixed real well. Of the gray and the beige together and... Uh, I use that and then I use a big sponge and I prep all the boards. I prep, you know, a good 30 of them. Just prep them all up and then uh, I have them all done. I sand them all lightly with 180 grit sandpaper and then I'm off and I have, I can do all this painting and stuff. And those of you that, you know, sell or you're going to give out gifts and stuff, the greatest way to get yourself, if you're some of you are starting out, the greatest way to uh, start getting your name out there is painting up some of these boards and... You know, giving them out as gifts, giving them out everywhere as gifts, you know, put them out and, you know, ask to put some up in restaurants and stuff like that. You know, of course, we're all locked down right now, but when we open back up, that would work. I had a, I had a dear friend and she passed away, um, you know, boy, it'll be almost two years now since uh, this Christmas. Um, and we painted together for almost 40 years. And she used to always tell all my students the greatest way she was big production painter, big seller, and she used to uh, go to uh, uh, arts and craft shows, weekend shows, and just sit in the booth and paint, and sometimes just give away little tiny paintings to people. She sold her paintings, but give away little tiny paintings, and those people came back, because she always put her name and address on the back of that little painting that she gave out, and those people came back and bought more. Cause, and it was just getting her name out there and getting advertising. So there's all kinds of ways. And we're going to talk about all these kinds of ways over on our networks. So make sure you get over to the social networks. Go hit the JansenArtStudio.com after you click like on the video. Go hit the JansenArtStudio.com and you'll see the links over to our MeWe social networks where we're talking about paintings and questions and stuff like that. Come, come join us over there, okay? All right. So... I have some of this. Let's take some yellow. And I thought, you know, I haven't done a real yellowy background. I'm going to take some yellow and some of this color here, yellow, and um, some of my reds, and right into some of these grays and stuff from the last one here. Let's add a little bit of extender to this. Push this around. Boy, that's kind of a glowy kind of yellow, but it'll work. It'll work pretty nice. And let's add a little light to it. Maybe a, a bit of light working through that that would be pretty you know yellows and so you look at yellows and you go okay what you know what kind of flowers i always tend to head towards compliments and stuff and so i'll use compliments a lot into some of these colors let's give it a shot of orange here too this will make my daughter happy because orange is one of her favorite or if not her favorite color so since she'll be doing some of the editing on these videos and stuff will make her happy here so, yeah, look at that. That's kind of pretty. That's kind of a nice little... There you go. Done. Just like that. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. But, you know, sometimes you feel like you paint the background and eh, it's good enough. Maybe they'll buy that, <laughs> you know. So, anyway. And how much do you like the person you're going to give it to anyway? So, <laughs> no, don't do that. All right. So, yellows, compliments is the violets here. So maybe some uh, maybe some red to violet kind of flowers here. Light pinks would be pretty. Might have to put out some more white here. So I'll take a little red, a little violet, right into the yellow. That creates a nice color of harmony. Now, this is very wet. I'm not a wet on the wet painter. I don't like to do that. So the last rose we put off that way, so we'll go this way and we'll put some ice. I'm just going to take some of it off here, right in where I want to make that rose. 
right in there okay yeah that'll work better see that's a nice pretty contrasting and we've got a warm background and a cool rose right there that's that's going to be kind of kind of interesting here and we'll push that out we'll push these right in let those edges just kind of lose to the background the three circles of the rose here now let's also just for giggles touch a little bit of that into the background here so it looks like we know what we're doing as an artist and moving color okay let's take some red violet and some red push that in don't mix it up too well let's push that center right in small movements up and out lift the pressure on your brush small movements small movements just lift the pressure sometimes use different edges of your brush start adding movement in and out for the bowl of the rose where the rose is going to be and you can see I'm kind of sketching we know we want to go darker right where that bowl of the rose is going to be that sets in that nice darkness there let's go a little darker let's put in some nice dark contrast right in there under the rose so you got a nice a real nice warm cool dark contrast on this rose let's uh, open this rose up a bit here too let's take some of this dark let's just take it right down this side we'll just open this rose up and then I'll push it here to uh, create those lost edges over there let's just open this rose up we haven't painted the rose open quite yet but you know practice what you know paint what you know when you're painting gifts and stuff and painting fast paint what you know and uh, so we'll now come over here with some of our light let's strike the light right in the front we can look at that it's like yeah that's that's not too bad I can move over here towards it and half tone it a little bit darker and strike onto that side and soften it out here so sometimes you'll see me just paint with short choppy strokes basically drawing the strokes he's drawing the rows that's what uh, I do a lot in portraits you know I'm big huge like you've heard me say this a thousand times and I'll say this a thousand more times I'm a big huge fan of Sargent Sargent always said every stroke on the on your painting he was the most brilliant of all the portrait painters and stuff and he said every stroke should be a drawing stroke where it's drawing something and you preserve the drawing the, of your of your uh, portrait and stuff. Well, he painted portraits and landscapes. So if every stroke is a drawing stroke, you're basically, you know, setting up basically the movement, the shape with every stroke. Now I can push and and soften some of that movement. I do that. I'll add other little things like. You know, in my mind, I'll sit there and go, okay, here's Sargent, then boom, here's Kushwa over here, and here's Pettit, here's all these masters that I studied. They're all coming out at different times into the painting. And, uh, you know, and then sometimes it's me coming out too. I'm going to come out and draw a petal right out here, pull in towards the bowl. There's a bowl, There's here's where our calyx of our flower is. We've got to make everything have the impression that it's going to go towards that calyx there, right? Let's let's make a little bit more power. Boom, 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 boom. This, I like that. Just power, quick loss right over here. Loose, sketchy, different way of painting here. Loose and sketchy of painting. Pull across and then some out. You need to have that movement out of that petal. I'll soften that. Pull up a little half tone. Half tone is halfway between the light and the dark that we used. Half tone. Let's push that right there. Get rid of some of that light. Maybe even push in some of that shadow again. Right down in there to restate that shadow. And so sometimes I use my fingers, sometimes I'll use just the brush, just move that. It, you know, if I move it too much, like I just did on that one there, I lose some of my impact of my stroke, and I get the joy of putting it back on again because I played with it a little bit too much. And so we'll try not to do that this time. We'll make a little bit, another set of petals here, make it a drawing stroke. Okay, make it a drawing short. Different way to look at it. Different way to imagine it. 
I'll sit there and say to myself, okay, this is going to be the last one. I need to start using up some of this paint. So I'll use different ones for the portrait. Or I'll end up painting one more today. <laughs> so use up the paint. Let's just draw a little, not quite as light, a little bit darker. Shadow side. Push that over a bit. Let some of that be nice and soft over there. Do you want to put in more? That's up to you. Do you want to put in uh, just a edge or, a, you know, just the idea of a chisel of the petal here, which is a petal that's coming out you a little bit more? Do you, you can walk it out just a bit like that and put in a petal and then tap in a little bit of shadow and just incorporate a little stroke or two of shadow right there. And you have a petal right in there. Maybe I need one right up there. So I'll load a more of the shadow tone and then I'll just pick up a little corner, a drawing corner of the brush with some light color and just draw it in right there. Make a nice drawing stroke of that petal right there like that. All kinds of ways. Let's loosen up with a, just a bit of the lighter pink right that center so it's not quite so dark. And that's a pretty little rose. Let's take a red, yellow, touch of black. I like that burnt sienna type colors. And uh, let's just push in some movement here. I like those kinds of things. Just a tiny touch of blue or black into some of this. Make some pretty colors, pretty tones. It doesn't always have to be the green leaves. You can do different colors, different tones with them here. Let's add just a love red and black browns. Fall colors. I got I got these colors all over my yard out there in leaves. You know we have here at our place in Pennsylvania we have about 80 trees and none of them have leaves right now. It's all over in gigantic mountains of leaves that I'll be doing tomorrow. Be, uh, be picking them all up tomorrow. So we'll take some of that and we'll just move that around a bit here. That's kind of nice. Let's push some of that into that that nice uh, bit of that stem there. Do you want to blossom? You know, just moving some of those yellow blossoms in. So you can see this real cool, it's warm right up here, but cool working against that warm background. That's kind of nice. Uh, Let's let's take some of the yellow here. Let's push a little yellow to white. Maybe one right down here. Here, just a nice, nice little setup. And you know, when you're painting, you know, for you know, uh, gifts and stuff like that, or production painters, you know, it's like in the uh, um, over on our MeWe group, I posted uh, Frank. Um, Tenny Johnson. Frank Tenny Johnson was a, a um, Western painter, beautiful Western painter, um, and he died uh, oh about 80 years ago. But um, his paintings, you know, now sell for upwards of a million dollars. And but I posted three paintings where he used the same horse and rider in the same position on three totally different a nocturne, uh, one in the e kind of the evening and one in the daylight paintings. He's a production painter. He's a professional painter. He'll use the same thing. So you may use this same rose here on four or five different paintings. You know, artists do that. Professional artists do that, especially when they're painting hundreds of paintings. But you may change out the blossoms, change out the colors. You know, that's that's how we do it. We, You know, you come up with a really good rose, well, you'll use it in four or five paintings. So here I imagine the blossom turning. I want to have the blossom petals, so I load up my brush so it's the heaviest. Heaviest paint here, nice edges. That's the found edge. This is the lost edge. So the found edge always goes next to the rose, so it always pulls the viewer towards the rose there. So if I'm painting this one here, see, if I put the found edge out here, your eye jumps down to here, see? So you don't want to do that. You want to blur that out here, just like that. Okay, and we want to put the found edge, more of the drawing stroke, sergeant's drawing stroke here, towards the towards the rose. So your eye here, as you're as you're looking at this little blossom, 
is pulling towards the rose, see? And then the lost edge is out here to this side, so your eye pulls in that way. So these blossoms are pulling your eye in here. Where and how you stroke is very important to the look. And, you know, we're, we're artists. We can control where it is you, you where we're going to take our little viewers on this visual journey. Let's put a few more little bits, ideas, and see, I just, I just, I just need an idea of color and movement. I don't need to have um, specifics up there. I just need an idea of color and movement, and you'll see them as little blossoms, especially if I add just a little bit of movement and stuff to that. You'll see them as little blossoms, little movements, little things here. And, uh, you know, here I'll add maybe more of a, a little bud or so, so it doesn't have to have everything there on it. Maybe get rid of that edge. It's a little much there. That's softer. That's better. Let's take a um, bit of our brownish kind of color here. Let's just drop that into the centers. Let's take a little cool color little red violet cool color for the contrast this also harmonizes the rose pulls the color from the rose always think about that color pulling that color from the rose out here into your blossoms right that's one of our rules those of you studying color theory with me boy we don't let you get away without doing that you gotta move that color here so we'll pull those colors in. That starts some of the harmony. Taking some of the rose color like this and physically adding it into the blossoms is going to harmonize your painting. And in the color theory, I always say, you add more harmony, add more har, you make more money. That's what I always tell them. Get harmony into your paintings. More people will like it. More people will like it. They'll like your gift or they'll like what you're buying or selling. You know, that's what we do. So here I'm just going to tap a little bit of the, start out on the side that's closest to the, to the rose, and just tap it around there like that. Tap it around. There we go. Around like that. Just some ideas of it back here. Just tap a little color. Maybe there's just a bit of it around. And I see some of that stuff. See, all I have to do is add any kind of movement back here, see? And it'll look like little little stuff. And if I don't play around with it too much, it'll look better. So let's take a little yellow, a little red, a bit of black. You can shove this over towards its blues, or you can leave it more towards its, its harmony of its browns here. You can do some negative painting here. Pulling those colors out. Uh, I might take this just a little bit towards the green here, just to see. Yeah, that's kind of a pretty color. Let's push a little bit in there. Here, like that. You can just tap. I'm going to leave most of the blossoms here, though. Most of the leaves. And see, I just sketch over that. Lose that edge. Don't want to make too much of an edge there. Lose that edge. And let's just do a little quickie brush dance work here. Now, in here, you could make a lighter, a lighter leaf. And let's get just a little more blue, green. A lighter leaf uh, that sets up closer to the top. And I do that sometimes if I show a lot of light to dark into the painting, I will show light to dark into the leaves. And you should do that because it's a good, it's a good harmony. So because uh, you expect to see it. Light and dark doesn't just move through the roses and not the leaves. You need to have it in both of them. So I'll work a little light to dark here. Just a bit, but I don't need too much. Here, a little bit more yellow. Here. There we go. Just a bit of that. You can leave just a memory of that and just pull back and try to keep it out. Boy, I like how that blurred into that rose. That looked like I knew what I was doing. And let's uh, put in just a touch of the vein lines. We've been doing that today. That's kind of a nice, quick little painting. 
kind of a fun little painting there too. So I'm going to go now paint some commission stuff for a little bit. Thanks ever so much for joining me. And um, we'll continue on. I'll paint some butterflies, some blossoms. We'll do some other kind of setups. I also want to take some of you into a few scrolls and stuff. I think might be kind of fun to introduce you guys into that torch. I mean, pleasure of doing that, okay? Because it, it is a lot of fun. And uh, don't forget to go over, check the Jansen Art Studio, our playlists and stuff that are over there. Sometimes it's a lot easier. Now, we're building those pages. So, you know, we're building all of that in there. So you got to give us through at least the month of November. Into the 1st of December, we plan on having everything kind of built. Um, so give us some time to get all the links and everything in there. And then it'll be a really great place if you have questions about paint or, you know, technique or any of that kind of stuff. You can go over there. And then... Um, you know, join us over on our social networks and you can post your photos and chat, it, chat away with us, ask questions, and there's lots of people, lots of teachers there, okay? Alrighty. See you guys on the next one, okay? You have a good day. Bye.